oh, back again. And we're still talking about commanding the right and forbidding the wrong. Now, we only got through half of the material that Lloyd wants to introduce just on this, these obligations that all Muslims are to do uh, as they work out their religion in a, in a foreign place or in Dar al Islam in with other Muslims. And we have always been overwhelmed, you might say, those of us who work with Muslims on how aggressive they are in their dahwa or their evangelism, depending on the word you want to use for that. And now I understand why. It's because it's right there in the manual. It's there in the Reliance of the Traveler. This is now part two, where I'm going to ask Lloyd to talk about the verbal abuse, the intimidation, and even the use of assault that is obliged to Muslims against those who are either as Muslims or non-Muslims who then use or find things that Muslims find injurious or find offensive. So over to you, Lloyd, help us out with this second part of this commanding the right and forbidding the wrong. All right. So we've laid a foundation in the previous show. We've introduced the basic doctrines and some terminology and concepts that are required for you to know. So let's continue with part two. This is shorter than part one. And to pick up where we left off, you must have knowledge of the wrong act. And it says here, again, you should not eavesdrop at another's house. However, if two upright witnesses come and inform you that someone is drinking or you hear music, you may enter his house and take him to task. Notice the, shall I say, euphemism, take someone to task. Like the mafia could take care of you or they could take care of you. So, okay, you interpret that as you see fit. Now, notice it says here, the second degree, except the second degree consists of explaining that an act is wrong, okay? But you hope that once you explain, they will stop once they find out. So you will give them evidence, right? You will give them this wisdom. And of course, you should say that, you know, people are not born scholars. We were unfamiliar with many things in sacred law until scholars mentioned them to us. And perhaps there are not many in your hometown. And then they'll say, have you consulted a scholar? Well, fortunately, I went and consulted a scholar. I am now reporting what the absolute top scholars in Islam to ever live have said on the topic. And I find that Muslims are very unhappy about that. I have consulted a scholar and now I'm consulting the wrong scholars. I need to consult them instead. But of course, they're not able to provide me with their qualifications as to why I should listen to them. Now, prohibiting the act verbally. The third degree is to prohibit the act by admonition advice and making the other fear Allah by mentioning hadiths. Okay, fine and well. Now, of course, if you're a learned person, do not come across as haughty and arrogant, right? Don't try to raise yourself above the other Muslim, right? There's, that's nice and well. But let's go here to censuring with harsh words. We've already discussed that you have to revile that person, which means to use abusive, insulting language, language that confers hatred, your hatred of that person upon them. The fourth degree of severity consists of reviling the person. Again, this is hatred, animosity towards that person and bearing down on him with sharp, harsh words. You do not resort to this unless unable to prevent the person by politeness. And he shows he wants to persist. So reviling him does not mean vulgarity. That's, oh, I have mentioned before, Islam has a very detailed doctrine of lying. And unfortunately, scholars are allowed to lie. Muslims are under the Sharia allowed to lie for various reasons. I will cover that another time. But instead, you will find that, that no, while it might say this, this is not the case in practice. So now reviling means vulgarity. Reviling means hatred so and nastiness. But rather saying you degenerate, you idiot, you ignoramus, do you not fear Allah? Well, we've seen this happen with far worse than you ignoramus and so forth. Allah Most High quotes Abraham, fie on you and what you worship apart from Allah. Can you not think? So apparently that's what Abraham politely said. Remember, Abraham is a Muslim. Abraham, because of the creed of Abraham, Muslims are to hate Jews, hate Christians, hate non-Muslims, as we covered in a previous show. Now, writing the wrong by hand. The fifth degree consists of changing the blameworthy thing with one's hand, such as by breaking musical instruments, pouring out wine, or turning someone out of a house wrongfully appropriated. And do not do so 
when one can get the person to do it himself. In other words, talk them into doing it themselves, make them stop, which effectively would be self-censorship or intimidation, right? Or break the instruments, for example, just enough to stop their being used for disobedience and no more. Or be careful not to break the bottles when pouring out wine. But if you cannot manage, except by throwing rocks at the bottles or the like, then you may do so and you are not obliged to cover the damages. Don't break the thing, but smash the thing and it's okay. Don't break the bottles, but smash the bottles, it's fine. Don't hurt him, but if you have to, it's okay. You will find that every single law in the Sharia has its opposite, has a loophole, has an exception. So it'll say, do not kill women and children, except... If you need to kill women and children, it's fine. Don't kill anybody, except if you have to murder them, it's, it's quite okay. You will see this over and over. We will see numerous examples as we go. But understand, it gives with one and it takes away with the other. Your thoughts, Jay, before I finish? We're nearly done. This will be quick. No, this is fascinating. Now, let me just say one thing. These are not the authority that do this. This is any Muslim can do this. Yes, yes. So I We showed that earlier in the first part. I could go to your house, pour out all your wine and destroy your instruments and then say, I've done my duty. I'm obliged to do so. And there's no recourse. I don't even have to pay for the damages. Correct. That's holy. What you've done is a holy act. You brought glory to Allah. So holy breaking and entering and holy, uh, what would you call it when you smash someone's possessions? You know, I'm not a lawyer. Well, we would call them the yeah. degenerate ignoramus. I would say they are the degenerate. Yeah. They are the ignoramus. Obviously, in this case, these are the words you're to use against someone who has actually involved, involved or imbibed in wine or played instruments. Yeah. Isn't that sad? Right. Intimidation, Q5.7. The sixth degree is threatening and intimidation for Allah, holy actions for Allah. Threaten people and intimidate. Now, the mafia threatens and intimidates. But of course, the mafia are evil, but if you do it for Allah, it's good, which is otherwise known as hypocrisy. And you should say, stop this or I will. And when possible, this should precede, it should precede actually hitting the person. Notice it doesn't say it must, it should. Understand there are these seven levels. You can go from level one to level seven without stopping in between. Understand these are recommended. These are not obligatory. You can go straight to a higher level without pausing in the middle. Be aware of that. It says should precede hitting them. So hit someone, punch them in the face for Allah because they are doing wrong. So yeah, that's the religion of peace. And the rule for this level is not to make a threat that you cannot carry out. That, that's thoughtful of them. Your thoughts, Jay? Well, I'm just looking at those examples. I'll seize your house or I'll take your wife hostage. <laughs> they are permitted to do that. I mean, just, I mean, um, are, 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 are this to me, it's almost like this is a, someone who's had taken the Mickey out on the Muslims, but this is actually part of their text. Yeah. So don't do it. If you can't do it, don't say it. If you cannot carry it out. Because, this makes yeah. now sense where you have case after case in places like Pakistan where they're going to Christian quarters and they're grabbing women, girls, young girls, and they're forcibly taking them to their house and they're marrying them quickly. And then, of course, once they're married, they are now legitimately the wives of the Muslims and the Christians have no recourse. You can see they they can say because you ate pigs, because you, you, uh, you offended me with the music that you sing in church. Therefore, I can take your wife. I can take your girl. I can take and have them for my son. This is happening all the time in Pakistan. And so far, the Christians don't have any recourse. Now I can see where this is coming from. This is the law. This is Sharia law. This is why Muslims are too humiliated to make this public, to open these books and read it and say, here is the beauty of Islam. Here is the perfection of Allah's law. They are too ashamed of this. I know Ali Dawa said, and we're proud of that. And he's lying about that because he is too embarrassed to show this. Because he knows people will see this as the barbarity that it is. I'll finish up shortly. Assault. The seventh degree is to directly hit or kick the person or similar measures that do not involve weapons yet. This is permissible for private individuals, Jay. You were asking, can the regular Muslim do it? Well, this is permissible for private individuals. You can use physical assault without weapons for now. 
right? Provided it is necessary. Well, okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, so yes, you can hit them and then force of arms. Now, the eighth degree is when one is unable to censure the act by oneself and you require the armed assistance of a few friends. So you require the armed assistance of others. So maybe you, I don't know, take 50 of your best friends and go gang up on Hatu and Tasha at the park and you go, hey guys, I think we're safe now. You know, the 50 of us, we can definitely take her. She's alone. Uh, right? You may not know this, but actually they have waited for her to leave the park twice on trains. They've beaten her up, a group of them. Uh, the, I don't know if you're aware of the fact that they have also gone when she came to a mosque, they jumped on her five men, they broke her foot, they broke her ribs, they then hung her from a tree. And she was actually in the in, uh, about to die from being hung when she was able to get her hand into the park or pocket and push a rape uh, alarm. And some Polish neighbors came and jumped on the men and released her before she would she die. She came that next Sunday down to the corner. This is in 2016. She was on my team. She came on crutches with bandages around her, her waist and with a uh, and with a neck oh. brace around her neck because her neck had almost been broken. She was sweating profusely. She should have been in the hospital. I said, what are you doing here? She said, we're getting back up on the ladder today. She didn't mention one word of what happened to her. And she covered her whole neck up so no one could see the neck brace. She didn't want to talk about it. She just wanted to preach the gospel. So this is something that has happened to Hatu numerous times, not just what you saw yesterday or what you saw last yeah. year. She has been beaten up many times and always, so, it's always a group of men. It's always yeah. more. One five foot two woman, a group of five or more men have to beat her up. Isn't that interesting? This is where it's coming from. It's the assault of force of arms. Now, people will say, but those aren't real Muslims. Those are right. No, this is Orthodox Islam. This is the single most popular Sunni Islamic manual on the planet. This is the most commonly available, the most highly endorsed, the most popular Sunni Islamic law manual in the world. This is not an ISIS manual. This is your neighbor next door has this on his bookshelf. Understand? This is teaching assault intimidation and the use of weapons breaking and entering this is holiness in islam wow right let me finish so and notice here that people would love to say that oh no 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 the caliph again it repeats it here there is no need for the caliph's permission this is not valid in just a caliphate john q muslim can take a bunch of friends and go and do this. And it is okay. Understand it. This, this makes me, sh I'm shocked. I am shocked, but this is standard, normal, common or garden variety Islam. And to very end off with the attributes of the person censuring, knowledge of the above mentioned appropriate circumstance of censure and their definition so as to keep within lawful bound. This is not Western lawful bounds. This is Islamic lawful bound. Do you want to hang them from a tree and kill them? Do it. Go for it because it's lawful under the Sharia. This person has insulted Muhammad. They've insulted the Quran, break their foot, punch them in the face, smash their things, steal their goods and hang them from a tree, rape them too. That's normal. This is Islamic law. It's lawful. And of course, yeah. And um, yeah, so there's just this last little thing. They have a story of a man. There's an early Muslim who used to go and get offal each day from the neighborhood butcher for his cat. And he sees something blameworthy about the butcher. So he returned home, turned out the cat. He got rid of his cat. He threw his cat out of the house and he went back to reprimand the man. And the man said, from now on, I'm not giving you a thing for your cat. To which this man replied, I did not censor you till I gave up both the cat and any desire for what you have. And that's the moral of this story. I think I'll end it here, Jay. And I'll give it over to you for your comments. Well, Lloyd, there's not much I have to comment here. I think what we have been asking, many of us who have had to engage with Muslims, often in public and in, in case uh, for those of us who work at Speaker's Corner, the Muslims who are there have all read the Reliance of the Traveler. They know exactly what it says. They would be familiar with everything you have now offered to us and showed for us. I was not aware of this. I saw the repercussions. I saw the actions. I was on the uh, many times on the other end of their actions. I did get beat up. I had my glasses broken. Many times I came home with blood all over my shirt. 
My wife did not want to know what happened. She didn't want the boys to know. I didn't understand at that time. I just thought that this is the, probably the culture of the people that were uh, forcing this on me. But I noticed it happened for, for many different cultures. It was Indians. Uh, uh, it was Pakistanis. It was Arabs. It was North Africans. Uh, it was even some Jamaicans. Uh, I couldn't believe that it didn't matter what culture they came from. They all seemed to act the same way. They were all very aggressive, even to the point of spitting on us, punching us, throwing us to the ground, throwing us off the ladder and certainly abusing us in every way when possible. We never did that. We never answered in kind. We were always very respectful. We did raise our voices. We did what Christ did. And there was such a contrast between the way the Muslims acted and the way we acted. And this came up all the time. In fact, we won almost every debate, not only because of what we had to say, we had better content, but because of also the way we said it. And it became a point for almost saying, you know, became a such a a testimony and a witness to Jesus Christ that we never did use harassment. We never did use verbal abuse. We never did use intimidation. And we certainly didn't use the force of hand or assault. Uh, we were very careful. We never intimidated, didn't need to because our material was so good. And because we have Christ as our example. What you're showing you, me, us here, is th where this all comes from. This is not a cultural proclivity that has now crossed many cultures. This is actually written down in a codified book, in a manual, The Reliance of the Traveler. You're showing that this is something well known. And certainly those that who are down at places like Speaker's Corner are those we engage with on the internet, because most of them would be radical. Most of them would be orthodox. Most of them would be quite familiar with this book, uh, this manual, The Reliance of the Traveler. That's one reason why we. it's so good that you're unpacking it. Thank you for doing this. I asked you specifically to unpack these different categories. You've done so in the last two videos. Now, Muslims and those who are listening, can you then understand why they have been attacking Hatun the way they have? Yeah, Hatun's been getting it more than anybody else because she's an apostate. She's an apostate. So she, they have a much higher hatred for her than anybody else. The other thing is many of us who have worked with Muslims and have engaged with them in mosques or on the streets, at book tables, and certainly at, uh, on the internet and at Speaker's Corner, where we get the most volatile of Muslims, they are the ones that are most aware of these manuals. They are the ones that know that what they're doing is a religious act. Even tourists and others who've come by are aghast at the way they act. There were many people, when, when you look at the comments of what happened to Hatun yesterday at Speaker's Corner, many of the comments were, how can Muslims behave this way and think that that's attractive? How can they call that a good testimony or a good witness for the peace of Islam? They're not there to get a good testimony. They're not there to make a good witness. Their witness is to intimidate. Their witness and testimony is to assault. Their witness and testimony is to harass. So much so that they hope that you shut up. They hope that you just walk away. We don't mm -hmm. shut up. We don't walk away. Hatun has never done that. She's been down at Speaker's Corner since 2013. So she has been there for almost nine years. I was there for 25 years. We never gave in to this intimidation. We didn't understand where it came from. We just assumed it was bad Muslims. Now we find out these aren't bad Muslims. These are good, these are Muslims. good Muslims. These are the best of Muslims. These are the ones that are actually following their manual. They are actually following exactly what they are to do. Do not be surprised, folks, when Muslims do harass you, do intimidate you, do verbally abuse you, do hate you, and yes, even raise their hand against you if they come up and take your wine and pour it out, if they come up and they have your instruments and destroy it. This is something they're obliged to do. It's not Lloyd saying it. It's not me saying it. It's the reliance of the traveler saying it. That's why if Muslims are going to come back on us on this, if any of you want to try to engage with us on this, if you want to come up and show us that we are wrong, that we've interpreted wrong, then all you need to do is show us. Show us from the Hedaya text manual. Show us from the reliance of the traveler where we are wrong. Everything that uh, Lloyd has shown you is straight out of the book, black and white. Don't argue with us, argue with it. But do not be surprised when Muslims start to act as they are told to act. They are obliged to do so. Lloyd, thanks so much. This has been great. Yeah, this has been terrific having you on board uh, to unpack this for us. We'll be doing some You're more welcome. of this. So stick tight. There's an awful lot more yet that Lloyd's going to go through. Till that time, uh, this is Lloyd and Jay, a few thousand miles apart, over and out. Goodbye.